Hello Internet, today I wanted to uh, explore how to create a new project using the command line uh, for, for .NET. Uh, and this is something that is, uh, I think, pretty straightforward, but I've forgotten how to do it, so I figured I'd record it and kind of show a few of the steps I use when I'm trying to figure out what command line things do. Um, so this is the new terminal for Windows. Uh, it's open source on GitHub and you have to download it from the Windows Store right now, but it's probably going to get integrated eventually. Uh, and so Right now we're just using a PowerShell window. Uh, there's options to use different things, like I have the just basic command line uh, and also Ubuntu here. We're going to just stick to PowerShell for now. Uh, most of these things shouldn't, shouldn't matter too much. Uh, and so the goal here is just to create a basic console project in .NET and be able to run that without touching any other tool other than the command line. Uh, and so right now we're just in my like development folder. There's a whole bunch of just random projects in here. So the first thing we need to do is actually make a directory. Uh, and so if you don't know what makedir does, uh, this actually isn't a PowerShell command uh, that doesn't exist. It's an alias. Uh, PowerShell has aliases for different different things. Um, and so actually, if you want to see this, you can do a dash question mark. Uh, that might be a little bit hard to see because it's a dark gray on a blue background, but uh, in PowerShell, dash question mark gives you help. Um, in a lot of other languages, you would traditionally do like make dir dash dash help or dash h. If you do this in PowerShell, what's going to happen, like if I do dash dash help, um, it's going to create a directory here named dash dash help. Uh, and and we, don't, we don't want that. Uh, so let's just delete that for now. Uh, and so... Going back to what we what we brought up, this is sort of the help function for make directory. Uh, so the actual name of the command is called new dash item. Uh, that's sort of PowerShell's normal naming scheme. It's got the thing it's going to do followed by what thing it's operating on. Uh, so there'll be like new item, delete item. I think RM is delete is remove item or something like that. Uh, so if we do question uh, or dash question mark, we get remove item. Uh, so those are the two, two commands for that. Uh, and you can use them interchangeably. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and so we get all of these things. If they're in brackets, that means they're optional. Uh, and so we get all of this stuff. And it's sort of giving us a, a list of things that we can do. Uh, in this case, it, the only thing that it's, it's expecting is going to be a string array, because that, that's not in brackets. Uh, the, this syntax can change depending on what OS you're using, but at least for PowerShell, this is sort of what you should expect. Uh, and so to create a new item or, or to create a new directory, we've already done it. So I guess, I guess that's less of a good example, but uh, if we do make dir uh, test.net, we'll get a new directory called test.net. Uh, so if I go into that with using cd uh, test.net, you can see our path has changed now and we are in the test.net directory. Uh, and so the command we're going to be using is .NET. Uh, this is sort of the command for doing everything in, in .NET Core, which is what we're going to be using. Uh, if I just run this, I don't think anything's going to happen. It's going to get really mad at me um, and give us a few things. You can see we have dash H and dash dash help. Uh, because this is a cross-platform thing, it uses this terminology instead of the question mark. I don't even think that works, but we can try it, I guess. It does work. Cool. Uh, so that gives you all the help stuff that you'd want. Normally when I'm testing things, uh, since I'm traditionally working in Linux, it would just be .NET dash dash help. Uh, and you get a whole list of commands uh, and everything we can do. So what we're trying to do is do a new project, which is going to be under this new command. And so we wanted to run .NET new dash dash help. And so this is going to give us a whole bunch of extra information about new projects in .NET and what we can do to do that. Uh, there's some examples at the bottom here. Uh, and what we want is sort of to see some of our options. So we can give it a name here, right, right here. Uh, install a source or template pack. I don't think we want any of that. Uninstall something. Uh, select the language we want. Uh, it's got the help options and list the templates. So this list of templates is sort of the, the list of things in .NET that you can create from, from the start. Uh, so if we do .NET new list, it's going to just give us this list of projects. 
no template match the input template list. Oh, uh, because I didn't actually run that, right? There we go. Dash dash list. And now we get a list of all the templates. Cool. So what we want to do is pick one of these and then that will help us create our project. Uh, so here's ASP.NET Core empty uh, and a whole bunch of other ASP.NET Core things. So that will create a web page for us. We don't really want that. Uh, they have different versions of testing. So N unit and X unit are both test projects. Uh, they're just different frameworks. Uh, and there's also a generic unit test project, which I don't know the difference between the three of those. There is a class library, which is going to be a library that you would include in something else. And then there's a console application, which we want. Uh, and so the name for that, the short name, is console. And you can see there is three languages here. Uh, and this is for the language that we actually want to use in our project. The default is in brackets. Uh, and that's just me kind of gleaming that from what this is doing. I think it's documented somewhere. But that's what this means. Uh, so you can see, for me, the default is going to be C sharp for everything. Uh, you can still create an F sharp thing uh, using this dash lang thing. Uh, but you have to actually physically specify that. If you don't, it's going to do the default. Uh, and then there's just some tags here that I believe you can search for based on an available types. That might be what that does. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so what we want is .NET new console. And so this match this name or a console matches the console application short name up here. And so since those match, we should be good. Uh, and if I do .NET new console, it's going to create a new CS project file in this directory. And if we do an LS, we can kind of see we have some new things in here. Uh, and we should be able to just cat out that program .cs. Uh, cat is just going to print whatever is in a file. So this is the contents of our program. Uh, so it's just going to write hello world. To run it, we just uh, need to look up what the run command is. Uh, so there's a run thing here. Uh, and you can see it builds and runs it. Uh, and so this is handy because it means we don't need to run this build first. Uh, we still can, but it's not required. Uh, if it's not built, it will build it for us. So we can figure out more about what that does. So run dash dash help. And we'll get all of this stuff. Uh, really, we don't need much of this. This is more useful if you want, if you have like a big project with multiple different things on it and you want to like select the project inside of this directory that you want to run. Uh, so we could theoretically have multiple projects in this directory. Uh, that might be a bit confusing, but it, 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 you could probably probably pull it off some way. Uh, <laughs> so let's just .NET run, and we should see hello world after it compiles here. There we go. And so that is like the basics of how to how to create this thing but we created we used a lot of default values when doing this so let's create a, an f sharp project and we'll give it a custom name uh, and so in order to do that i want to go up uh, cd dot dot stands for go up one directory uh, the dot dot is a special keyword in in the terminal for one directory above your current one uh, dot is a, a short word for the uh, current directory. Uh, so if we, I don't know if that's going to work. Echo dot, that's not, yeah. <laughs> All right, bad example. Let's not do that. Instead, let's uh, remove our test.net directory. It's probably not going to like this. Uh, do we want to continue and remove all of our children? Defaults to yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I did A just to kind of get rid of everything, but uh, we should be good here. So let's create a new one. Uh, so make dir. And actually, uh, another console trick. Uh, there's a few things you can do with the control key on, on different keyboards uh, or on different terminals. And for the most part, at least with this terminal, it aligns fairly well with the Linux versions. Uh, and so like, if you have a long running task and you want to kill it, uh, control C will send a, a uh, kill command. I'm, I might be screwing those up. There's control C is kill, control Z is uh, pause. It will, it will background it. Uh, but what we want is control R and you can see it's doing a uh, backward index search. 
I, I, I might be making that terminology up. I, I don't actually know what B, BCK-I stands for, but it's doing a search over all of our history. And so what we can do is search for make directory and we get this test.net thing. If I just hit tab, it just auto fills the rest of it. Uh, and so this will work for your history if you can go and find previous commands you've run. You can also use the up and down arrows on your keyboard, but this uh, tends to be a little bit easier. Uh, so we can go into that and then just go into there. Uh, and so what we want is .NET new dash dash help. Uh, and this is going to be another console project, but we want to select F sharp. So we want dash lang uh, equals F sharp. And we want to give it a name. No spells specify the name of the current directory is used. Uh, so if we don't specify a name, it's going to use the current directory. I imagine if we give it a name, it's going to create a subdirectory in our current one, uh, which is probably what we want. So let's do .NET new uh, console dash lang f sharp and dash name. Uh, is it dash name or dash n dash dash name? Uh, so typically. A double dash is the long name, and a single dash is the short name. Uh, so those will be abbreviations. Usually they're one or two characters. And for Lang, it's longer for some reason. Uh, but it's typically going to be just the shorter thing. I tend to gravitate towards the longer names for most things because I like to be able to read or go back and like understand what my things were doing. But it's it's up to you. Uh, in this case, we're going to do F, F sharp console. Uh, and that should create a new folder. You can see uh, when previously it was just creating a CS project file. Now it has F sharp console slash blah. Uh, and we have an FS proj instead of a CS proj file. So now we have an F, uh, uh, F sharp project. And if I ls, we don't have all of those files anymore. We have a directory. Uh, so if we go into that, we should, ooh, that's not how that works. <laughs> we should see this. Uh, and so we can actually cat out that program.fs. It, it, it's F sharp. <laughs> and I'm not going to try to explain what this is because I'm not super familiar with F sharp, but it's just printing out a line. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, and we should be able to just run this, so .NET run. And since we're in the directory, it should know what to do and run this for us. Uh, if we don't necessarily know what we want to do, like if I go back up, uh, we saw that we could specify a specific project. Uh, so I can do .NET run dash P, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, and do F sharp console. And this should also run our F sharp program. Uh, one other thing while we're here, uh, if you want spaces in your name, you need to specify, uh, you need to quote it. Uh, because this is a console app, and so if you're not super familiar with console stuff, uh, every single space is a delimiter. It means that it's expecting something new. Uh, and so if you do spaces, it's going to think that those are two separate commands instead of a single name. Uh, so if I do .NET new uh, console-n hello world, uh, I imagine this is going to break in a number of weird ways. Yeah. <laughs> So it doesn't like this at all. Invalid input switch world. Uh, so what it's trying to do is look for some sort of flag that maps to world because that it's seen that as a new input. Uh, and, and there isn't one because that, that's supposed to be part of our name. So to get rid of it, we can either double quote it or single quote it. I'm not going to go into what the difference is in this video. Uh, you should go and look it up. There's three different types of quotes. Uh, there's the double quote, the uh, single quote, and then the tilde, what, whatever this is. Uh, I don't know the actual name of that symbol, but whatever that is, it's a thing. Uh, and so we can just quote this and we'll get a new project in our hello world directory, uh, which gets a little bit weird because we have to actually, you'll notice uh, our CD is now quoted as well because it's got spaces in it. Uh, I recommend staying away from spaces because they uh, turn into a big problem when this starts happening because you have to remember this every single time or you might run bad things. Uh, but it, it should work. So .NET run 
uh, and everything should should function as we expect it to. And we get hello world. Cool. So that is, I guess, the, the basics of like learning how to do this and how to how to create something with a console uh, and, and get started with C sharp. Uh, this will only work with .NET Core. If you're not using .NET Core, you're not going to be able to do this. Uh, but I would recommend using .NET Core for new things you're working on because that's going to be cross-platform and uh, it's just, yeah, it's nice. So yeah, if you have any questions about this or there's anything else you want me to cover, let me know in the comments uh, because I kind of kind of just breezed through this and was kind of hoping as like an introduction to, to this whole thing. Uh, because maybe you've never used the terminal before or whatever. Um, pretty much anywhere you have a terminal, this should work. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is a good introduction and you can start using this. But uh, that's it for this video. So until next time, see you, Internet.